man aswanun nas li nafsihi who is most adept at safeguarding his soul who is most adept at safeguarding his soul and he replied amlakuhum li lisanihi uh, the one that is most adept at controlling his speech Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salli Allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabi Lumi Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmah Wa hayyat lana min amrina rashada Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah My name is Faraz Khan A faculty member here at Zaytuna College In this blessed month of Rabi'ul Awwal It is my pleasure to present to you on the topic of The tongue, our greatest gift and our greatest enemy Allah Ta'ala states in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا O people of faith, have taqwa of Allah, have mindfulness of Allah, and speak with uprightness. Speak what is good and true and upright. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And that if you fulfill these uh, commands of piety, and speaking with uprightness, uh, Allah will rectify for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, whoever obeys God and His Messenger, has surely attained triumph and victory. Speech is of the great gifts of Allah Ta'ala, of God Almighty to mankind. It is what in fact, defines our very essence. The logicians say that the human being is the rational animal, which in Arabic, the Arabic logicians translated that as al haywan al natiq which is literally the speaking animal. And so speech is one of the most salient manifestations of our rationality, which distinguishes us from all other animals. And uh, Allah Ta'ala has stated that this is from the mercy of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allamahu al-Bayan, that the All-Merciful has taught the Qur'an, has created mankind, and has taught the human being how to speak. Uh, and so the greatest uh, usage of our speech, of this great gift, is in fact in the remembrance of Allah Himself. So back to that. The beginning of Surah Ar-Rahman, the second ayah, Allam al-Qur'an, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, that the All-Merciful taught the Qur'an. And so reciting the words of God and making remembrance of Allah Almighty, of God Almighty, is the greatest usage and the greatest um, expression of gratitude for this gift of speech. And Allah Ta'ala states in the Qur'an, Udhkuruni adhkurkum, make mention of me, make remembrance of me, and I shall remember you and that the remembrance of God is the means of our spiritual life. Our Prophet taught us وسلم, as is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih collection, وسلم, that the example of the one that makes remembrance of his Lord compared to the one that does not make remembrance of his Lord is like the example of the living and the dead. And so dhikrullah, the remembrance of God Almighty, is the means of life of the heart, life of the soul. And with that life, then we can do incredible things for the sake of God Almighty, for the benefit of mankind. Uh, this is the best use of the very organs of the lips and the tongue. And our Prophet referred to these organs or these physical limbs, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith uh, related by Ibn Majah in his Sunan, it's a hadith Qudsi, so the Prophet relating from God Almighty that Allah Ta'ala states, uh, uh, Allah Ta'ala, bi shafata. I am with my servant. I am with my servant when he makes remembrance of me and when his two lips move with my remembrance. And uh, one time, also related uh, by Ibn Majah in his Sunan, one time a uh, Bedouin came to the Prophet وسلم, and he asked him, he said that the details of the religion uh, have proven numerous for me. There's so many details, it's hard to memorize all of these uh, specifics and particulars of the faith. So give me one thing that I can hold fast to. And the Prophet taught him, وسلم, لا يزال لسانك 
رَتْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ That let your tongue constantly be moist with the remembrance of God, mighty and majestic. And so the lips, the tongue, these faculties, these limbs were created primarily to make remembrance of God Almighty. But they were also created to speak uh, with beneficial speech. So uh, the Prophet taught in a hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَالْكَلِمَةُ الطَّيِّبَ Sadaqa, that a good word is a type of charity. And uh, this is why we have to train ourselves to either speak what is good or to remain silent. And so related to this topic of speech and the tongue is the virtue of silence. And the Prophet taught us وسلم, of the virtue of silence when he said, Man samata naja, whoever is silent, prove safe. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is related by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih collection, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, fal yuqul khayran aw liyasmut. That whoever truly believes in God in the last day, let him speak well or remain silent. Uh, one of the early Imams of our tradition, Mamshud ad daynuri he died in the year 299 after Hijrah. He was a contemporary of Imam Junaid. One of his teachers was Ibn al-Jalla. He said, al hukama warithu al-hikmata bis-samti wa tafakkur al hukama warithu al-hikma bis-samt wa tafakkur That the sages only inherited wisdom through silence and contemplation. Another early Imam of our tradition, Dhunnun al-Misri, rahimahullah, he died in the year 245 after Hijrah. He was a great Nubian sheikh that lived in Egypt. Uh, he was once asked, Man aswanun nas li nafsihi. Man aswanun nas li nafsihi. Who is most adept at safeguarding his soul? Who is most adept at safeguarding his soul? And he replied, Am lakuhum li lisanihi. Uh, the one that is most adept at controlling his speech. The one that is most adept at controlling his or her speech. And uh, the great companion Abu Bakr as Siddiq, anhu, when he was the head of state of the nascent Muslim polity after the Prophet Sallallahu had passed that Abu Bakr, he would be seen holding his tongue at times. He would be seen holding his tongue and sometimes he would keep pebbles in his mouth. And when he was asked about this, he said, uh, You know, the, the, this, this um, organ has cast me into destruction time and time again. So. The greatest of our saints and sages uh, and, and masters of piety were most concerned about speech. This is from the implication of ittaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida that we began with this verse of the Qur'an that have taqwa of Allah, be mindful of Allah, be mindful of the divine and speak only what is good and upright. That uh, the first we wanted to mention is ghiba, which is backbiting. And the definition of backbiting is to speak about another person in, in a manner they would not like. And this is what the Prophet himself, he defined it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Sahih Muslim. He said, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ O كَمَا قَالَ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that backbiting is to mention your brother or sister in any way that they would not like. And so that's the uh, principle that defines this uh, horrible sin. And uh, we must be keen that we don't speak about people except in a way that they would uh, be pleased with. And that uh, backbiting is sinful, not only on the one engaging in it, but the one listening to it. So the uh, responsibility of someone who hears backbiting is to stop the person and to tell them that it's wrong. And uh, if one is in a situation where they're, they're, not, un they're unable to do that, then they should get up and leave. One of the great early shaykhs, Abu, Abu al-Mawahib al-Tunisi, rahimahullah, he said that if you have to get up and leave, if you can't condemn it in, in the moment, then you should recite Surat al-Ikhlas and Falaq and Nas, and you should donate the reward to the person that was spoken ill of. And so this is something that we can do to try to make up for the fact that, you know, uh, someone has spoken in, a, in an uh, unbecoming manner. If a person slips into the sin, they should make repentance. Uh, one does not have to tell the individual spoken about that they, uh, that they committed this wrong. They can simply repent and seek the forgiveness, forgiveness of Allah Ta'ala directly. 
the only time one has to apologize is if, is if the person heard that they spoke ill of them. So if the individual that was spoken ill about hears that you spoke ill of them, then you must seek their forgiveness as well. But otherwise, one simply uh, repents to Allah Ta'ala with sincerity. There are some cases the fuqaha, the jurists mention in which backbiting is allowed. And the basic principle is that if there's any valid aim uh, that's countenanced by the sacred law. So some examples that they give is um, stopping a wrong or redressing a wrong. Uh, if one has to go to court and testify, if one has to go to any person of, uh, in a position of authority to get their help to stop someone from doing something wrong, that's not considered backbiting. Uh, also, if one is giving counsel uh, with respect to uh, someone engaging in a type of relationship with, so with someone, for example, marriage proposal or a financial transaction, a business partnership, uh, any type of, you know, where, where the individual needs to know more detail about the one. Uh, the, but Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says that one should uh, keep that counsel as general as possible. So only say uh, what's sufficient to uh, convey, you know, one's caution. And uh, another case where it's not considered backbiting is uh, the Hanafi scholars mention ala waj al ihtimam. If one is talking about someone else uh, out of genuine concern and care for them, this often happens with family members or close friends. If someone is engaging in something wrong and they need support then the people that love and love them and care for them have to discuss the matter. So that's also not considered uh, backbiting. A another major sin uh, with re related to speech is namima or tailbearing, which is defined as uh, malicious gossip. So spreading rumors about people in a way that causes uh, discord or uh, harms relationships. And Imam Nawawi says the, the essence of namima is simply disclosing any private matter. So, so divulging anything that the person would not like to be divulged, this is called namima. It's a major sin. Some of the early Muslims would say one third of the punishment of the grave is because of namima. And our Prophet taught us وسلم, in the authentic hadith, لا يدخل الجنة قتات وفي رواية نمام The talebearer shall not enter paradise. And so it's a major sin to do that. And Imam al-Ghazali says if one uh, receives, if one hears uh, namima from someone else, one has to stop them and condemn it and not spread it themselves. And uh, another uh, major sin uh, related to speech is what's called al-khawd fil batil, which is not spoken enough, uh, not spoken about enough in our uh, communities, but it's to speak about sin. So al-khawd fil batil, literally delving into falsehood, is simply talking about sins, talking about anything unlawful, and this is sinful in Islam. Uh, Tabarani relates a narration uh, of Ibn Mas'ud, the great companion, Allah be pleased with him, that he said, أَعْضَمُ nas خَطَايَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ خَوْدًا فِي الْبَاطِلِ the people on the Day of Judgment that ha will have the greatest sins are those that most engaged in al-khawd fil batil, in speaking about sinfulness. We should be careful that we don't speak about sins, whether uh, a, a person's own past sins or the sins of anyone else. Why? Because sins are offensive to our Creator. And so we don't want to talk about them as if they're trivial. Uh, but again, uh, the sacred law allows for uh, exceptions if there's a valid aim. So if one is warning someone or one has to talk about a public wrong, then uh, there is leeway to mention uh, sinfulness. But otherwise, uh, one is not allowed to. And one should, again, keep that to a minimum for the, uh, to the extent needed for that valid aim. And then finally, al-mira' uh, wal-jadal. Uh, argumentation, quarreling. Uh, Al-Mira is defined as picking apart someone's words, criticizing the way one speaks, their word choice. Uh, and this is unlawful if it's done in a manner of uh, out of pride or uh, in a way that belittles uh, one's interlocutor. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as related by Abu Dawood in his Sunan, that 
أنا زعيم ببيت في ربد الجنة لمن ترك المراء وإن كان محقا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that I guarantee a house on the outskirts of paradise for anyone that avoids quarreling and picking apart people's words even if they're in the right and so uh, we should be careful that uh, you know again if it's in a way that belittles other people we don't want to criticize the way people talk and uh, jadal is argumentation argumentation and so if there's a proper context for uh, debate وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ that Allah Ta'ala says to debate with them in a manner that is beautiful and so we're allowed to debate if the context is appropriate and if we fulfill the courtesies and requisites of debate which is that it's not born of ego and the, and the aim is not simply to defeat, the, to defeat the interlocutor but rather to discover the truth together and uh, to speak in a respectful way even when one is debating but uh, most of the time, unfortunately, argumentation is not done with those courtesies and therefore it is uh, highly problematic. And if it, again, if it's done in a way of embarrassing someone else or out of haughtiness or pride, then it is unlawful. And our Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, in the hadith of, uh, related by Tirmidhi, مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدًا كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ that no people ever went astray after having been guided save that they were made uh, given to argumentation that they were made given to argumentation or that became their habit or their want Imam Malik Ibn Anas rahimahullah, the great Imam of Medina he hated argumentation with respect to the religion uh, and he would leave anytime people argued about religious issues and he would say rahimullah ta'ala laysa hadha al-jadal min ad-din fi shay he says this argumentation has nothing to do with the religion and he said rahimullah al-mira yuqassi al-qalb wa yuwarrith al-dagha'in he said argumentation and quarreling it hardens the heart and it leads to uh, grudges and hatred between people especially in our age of uh, in the internet and uh, social media and all the types of uh, bickering and quarreling that uh, transpire on, on social media, we should be very cautious because typing out speech is the same as speaking it from one's tongue, one's mouth, that it carries the same responsibilities and moral uh, requisites. So we ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq and taysir, success and ease in uh, abiding by these principles that are for our own well-being in this life and the next. Wassalamu alaikum Muhammad and Nabi Nami. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Barakallahu fiikum. I wish you all have been enjoying the programs offered to celebrate the legacy of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the college. I encourage you to take benefit of the various programs and to practice mindfulness gradually in your life. Your support to the college is received with. A lot of love and gratitude. Please consider joining the 12,000 Strong campaign. Walhamdulillah. Well,